Welcome back. We have a fun one today. Uh, a couple months ago, I was talking with a friend of mine who's the GIS librarian here at the university, and he mentioned that they have a digital archive of historic aerial photographs. Now, I love looking at these old aerial photos and just checking things out from, from way back when, and he was asking if there was an opportunity that we could do some photogrammetry with these historic aerial photos, and I was like, sure, why not? Um, so we were, uh, were just checking it out, and uh, I just went through uh, to look at some of these photographs that they had, did a quick search uh, for Moscow to see what came up, and lo and behold, there's a whole set of uh, photographs that were taken from just east of the city of Moscow in 1934. So uh, there's not a complete set for the, for the city, but this covers sort of the eastern edge of the city all the way out towards the, the town of Troy, um, about 10 miles east of Moscow. And I thought this would be a fun uh, image set to, uh, to work with and to see what we could do with in Metashape. So I just opened uh, each of these photos up and downloaded them as a JPEG and saved them to uh, to my hard drive. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with these in Metashape. So objective of this uh, walkthrough, this exercise is sort of three things. First is just to see what we can do with these photographs in, uh, in Metashape uh, with a set of historic aerial photographs. Can we get them to align? Can we get an ortho mosaic out of them uh, at the end? And, uh, and then we'll see about bringing in some ground control for these so that we could actually get this product referenced to a, a modern coordinate system. And then finally, just to look at how our product we're going to create in Metashape lines up with, uh, with some modern imagery. And then to just look at how some things have, have changed over basically almost a 90 year time period from when these photos were taken to today. So let's switch over to Metashape now and bring these photos in and get started. So uh, in Metashape here, I'm just going to add the folder with the photos in it. And they're just going to come in. Uh, they're straight up JPEGs. There's nothing special about them. In fact, there's not even any GPS coordinate information associated with these. They're just pictures. And that's going to, uh, uh, you know, give us a, a bit of a challenge uh, and, and increase the, the need for us to actually have ground control to reference these to uh, a coordinate system so we can use the, the products at the end. So uh, we can bring these in and you can open these up and, and look at them. Before we do anything for uh, aligning these photos, we need to deal with this black border. Uh, of these photographs. These are scanned from hard copy 9 inch uh, uh, aerial photos. Uh, so we have a black border around them. Some of them you'll see the fiducial marks. They have the text up at the at the top that have like the flight line and the and the photo number on them and the year. Um, you know that stuff's okay. The black border is going to cause us some problems uh, when we align them. We'll see some artifacts in the in the point clouds that are coming from these black borders. So what we're going to do is mask the, uh, the, the sort of black edge out of these photos. And we're going to use this uh, intelligent scissors tool up here on the toolbar to do that. So I've selected that tool and then I'm just going to start down here in the, in the corner of the photo and uh, just draw a box here, uh, trying to keep to the actual like portion of the photo that has stuff in it as close as I can. Okay, and then once I click on my first dot, it'll it'll complete that box. Now I've actually selected the stuff that's inside of this, but I want to mask out the other stuff. So I need to come up here to the toolbar and click this invert selection button. Now it's selected everything that I didn't draw a box around, and now I'm going to add that to my mask, so my add selection button up here on the toolbar. And that's it. Now on the photo tray down here at the bottom, you can check to see what photos have masks and where the masks are by clicking the show masks button. And so on this photo that we just did, the mask is the, the masked out portions are black and the included portions are white. All right, so we can see 
That one has a mask done for it. None of the rest of these do. So the next step is to actually go in for all the rest of these photographs and uh, complete the masks. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and do that. Uh, it'll take me a, a few minutes to do it and then we'll come back at that point. All right, you can see I've got the masks complete for all of my photos. And I wanted to clarify something. So not masking these would not affect the ability for these photos to align. They'll align just fine regardless of whether you do masks or not in this case. Uh, however, we would have these black borders that would show up in the final products or show up in the point clouds as just sort of weird values. And so it's best if we just mask those out so that we don't have to, to deal with it. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get ready here and do the photo alignment, but first I wanna switch over to this reference panel and uh, come up here to the settings and uh, uh, make a couple of adjustments here. So I said before, these photos don't have any geographic information associated with them, so we need to tell MetaShape that we are actually dealing with, with geographic data and we're going to be working in this uh, you know, decimal degrees uh, WGS84 coordinate system um, as opposed to just a local uh, unreferenced uh, coordinate system in meters. Okay. The other thing that uh, we need to do here is um, uh, adjust the accuracy of the markers. So this is for our ground control and we're going to be pulling ground control off of modern uh, imagery uh, and trying to reference that to images from 90 years ago. And we're going to be doing things like road intersections, um, some of which we may not be able to get a super accurate uh, location for and some of which may have actually changed over almost 100 years so there's there's no way we're gonna get like half a centimeter accuracy with these markers so we're gonna change that to actually something uh, more uh, along the lines of like you know 50 meters right um, the, and all that's gonna do is just sort of help the, uh, the algorithm a little bit when it um, Re references these things based off the ground control data. Um, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. And now we can come up to uh, the workflow and align these photos. Now there's a couple of things here that are a little different than what we normally do. If we're dealing with good quality drone imagery, then we would typically do a, a high accuracy alignment. Um, these are fairly coarse resolution. I mean, they were scanned at high resolution, but the original photos themselves are not super high res photos. Uh, so we're going to just do a medium accuracy on this. The other thing, if we had GPS information on the photos, then we would use the uh, source for the pre-selection. And that would basically instruct Metashape to look for image matches off of uh, photos that were that were close by. Um, we don't have that information, so there's, there's nothing for it to use. Um, however, these photos were collected in sequence along a flight line, so we can use sequential. So it will look for matches between adjacent photos, and it'll help uh, improve things and speed things up a little bit. Okay. Last thing that we need to do, so we have masks for our photos. And uh, if we didn't have masks, that would be set to none. Uh, we're going to apply the masks to the key points. So it's only going to look for key points uh, within these areas that have, that have not been masked out within the photo itself, okay? So once I've got these things set, then I can go and hit, a, hit OK. And uh, it should go pretty quick here. There's only a handful of photos and they're not super high res. Okay, so this is good, everything aligned. That looks really good. Let me close that photo out. We'll come back over to our model. Now there's nothing showing up here in the model, so I can hit the zero button to reset the view um, to that to that model. And uh, so here's our initial sparse point cloud for our historic aerial photos. And that actually looks pretty good. I don't have a lot of really oddball uh, points uh, that I need to deal with. So uh, that looks pretty happy. Um, notice here at the bottom, we have uh, not quite 11,000 of these uh, points in our sparse cloud. 
if you've worked with uh, drone imagery a lot, that may seem almost like an alarmingly low number of points for a sparse cloud, but given the images that we're dealing with, it's actually uh, pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do, um, and we could go ahead and build a, you know, a dense cloud here. We could build our sort of other products, our ortho mosaic, that kind of thing. Um, but it wouldn't be referenced to anything. We don't actually have a coordinate system assigned to this. So the, the next thing we need to do is actually assign some ground control or find some ground control points here uh, on these photos. And uh, I went ahead ahead of time and, and looked through all of these photographs and figured out some road intersections that uh, existed back then that still exist today and I uh, put them together in a CSV file, and I believe it's that one. And we're gonna load this in, um, check your uh, columns to make sure everything's good. And we'll go ahead and add that, uh, create new markers for it, okay? Now, again, if you're used to working with drone imagery that has GPS coordinates, your markers would, would show up here on your sparse cloud in their approximate locations, but they can't do that because we don't have any coordinate uh, information assigned here. So we're going to have to go into our individual photos and uh, sort of find these ground control points and uh, um, reference them that way. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to open up this photo here. Um, so this is the eastern edge of Moscow. Um, there's a sort of a shopping mall, uh, grocery store, theater here, right? So this is all built up. This is, uh, if you're familiar with Moscow, this is what would become Highway 8 that goes east out of, uh, out of town. Uh, this is Mountain View Road right here. This is the, uh, the cemetery on the east side of town, okay? And so uh, we're going to zoom in on this intersection right here. Uh, whoops, I still got the wrong tool selected. There we go. So uh, this is Mountain View Road and White Avenue, okay? So, uh, so I positively identified this area and I'm gonna put my mouse right over the spot where I want the ground control point. I'm gonna right click, choose place marker, and I'm going to find, uh, there we go, White Avenue and Mountain View, okay? So it's gonna put that, um, that marker right there. Now, what I need to do is actually go through all my other photos and see if I can find White Avenue and Mountain View. So here I've got this line, this red and white dashed line. So we didn't, haven't given it enough information yet to, to sort of positively, positively identify this ground control point in the other photos. So it's doing its best. It's saying it thinks that the, the marker is somewhere along this line and sure enough it actually shows up right here at the correct intersection so I'm just going to right click right there place marker White Avenue and Mountain View okay um, and I think these are the only two photos that that one occurs in but we're going to do the same thing for the rest of these in the uh, the write-up document that goes with this lab exercise there's a table that lists all of these ground control points um, and uh, has these coordinate values in it and then it, it tells you which photos they're in and gives you a thumbnail for each one so you can find that area on the photo, zoom in and place your ground control. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take care of the ground control for all these photos here uh, offline and then I'll come back when we're done, show you what those looked like and then we'll move on to uh, referencing the model. All right, I've got my ground control done, and I think if we were really doing this in production, maybe we would try to find more ground control. Um, you know, I, I was shooting to have a couple per photo, but given that there's not a ton of overlap between these photos, sometimes it's even hard to find the, the same location in more than two photos. Um, so uh, if we look at our ground control and we s move all the way over, and look at our projections and the projections are the number of photos that we found this ground control point in so we've got between two and three which is this is not a ton but it should be sufficient for what we want okay so at this point then we want to uh, sort of 
check our model out and see how good we're doing. So I can hit this uh, update transform button here and uh, it's going to uh, give me my, uh, uh, my error estimates. Um, I could pick a couple of these here, um, Robinson Lake and Darby, right? I could come in and see sort of like what might be happening there and try to get a better fit, um, you know, for that one by, by moving that point around. Um, you know, update that transform again, right? I could play around with that, but really that's not too bad considering that we're dealing with uh, uh, really old imagery that's not very high resolution. Uh, 20, 20, 21 meters isn't, isn't too uh, bad of, a, of an ask there. So, so now that I have my model referenced, okay, I can actually come back into my model window uh, and hit zero again. And then it will actually show it in uh, uh, in sort of space where it belongs. It's oriented correctly, so you know east end of Moscow all the way traveling east towards the city of Troy. Um, and I can now see my ground control uh, markers on there as well. So at this point, then uh, what we want to do is typically we would do some model optimization. So try to identify and, and remove low quality points from the sparse cloud. Um, and if we do that, the way we would normally do um, for this, you notice as I, as I start grabbing this like reconstruction uncertainty tool and, and making a selection there, that it's selecting points all in a big block in my model. And, and if I deleted these points, it would leave me a huge hole in the model and that could compromise our, our ability to actually like build a DEM or a ortho mosaic for this area. So we need to do a really light uh, pass in this um, model optimization phase. Uh, we don't have a ton of extra sparse points to work with. So I may you know, go through and uh, uh, remove some of these lower quality points, re-optimize that, um, you know, maybe come back in here and yeah, re remove just a handful more, um, but I don't want to go too far because it's going to compromise our ability to actually use the model. So, um, so you can play around with that uh, a little bit. Um, again, light touch is what you uh, you really want. Okay, so from here now we're ready. We could actually uh, build our other products. So uh, we can come back over and build a dense cloud. Um, Medium quality is, is really all that's necessary with this dense cloud. We're going to uh, not actually analyze the cloud itself. We're just going to be using it as a, a sort of a basis for creating our DEM and then our ortho mosaic. So uh, this should go pretty quick as well. And there we go, there's a dense cloud. There's a dense point cloud from 1934. Like how cool is that? Um, so we can start to see the topography for that area. Okay. Um, at this point, it needs me to save the model or save the project. Um, let's call it what, Moscow 1934. And then we can go ahead and build our uh, DEM. Um, so uh, remember, when you're once you get to the point of building DEMs, it's it's best to shift it over into a projected coordinate system. Um, it makes measurements easier, and uh, especially if we're going to be dumping this out of MetaShape into another GIS product, it's it's best to be working in a projected coordinate system. The rest of these things we can leave as defaults. And let's take a look at that model. There you go. That's pretty cool, right? Um, Oh, and I have the uh, sort of aerial imagery turned on for the background. You can toggle that on and off with this globe button, the show base map button. I'll uh, turn that off for right now and then we'll come back to it. So here's our DEM. We can see our uh, topography of the area, right? The, the sort of ridges and stream systems. That looks pretty cool, right? Uh, okay, so then last step, let's build our ortho mosaic. Uh, we're using the DEM as the base. Um, I'm just going to leave most of these the same. We're going to end up with a one and a half meter product at the end. And again, we're not dealing with a lot of photos, so it should go pretty quick. 
Okay, and there's our ortho mosaic. Um, so, Moscow region, 1934. Let's just kind of look around here and see how this worked. Um, so we get a little bit of weirdness uh, right here. Um, this is sort of the uh, region where you know we had those sort of two photos on the eastern side of uh, of town. Uh, some of this coloration difference may be related to the sort of differences in illumination of those photos. Um, margins are going to be weird. Center of the model should be uh, quite a bit better. So uh, so yeah. Let's take a look now at how this actually lines up with uh, modern imagery. So I'm going to turn the base map back on. And uh, okay, now the base map is, I don't know what the actual date of this is. I think it's like a mishmash of different things, but it's more modern imagery. How about that? Um, and then we can turn the ortho on and off by just clicking this ortho mosaic button. So we're going to zoom in here to, uh, to some areas and just look at say like how these road features uh, line up. So let's turn the ortho on and off. Um, we're doing pretty good. So like this road intersection and the road is uh, is pretty good. Okay, we've noticed like there's a reroute of the road here um, and same thing over in this area. But in general, things are actually showing up pretty, pretty good. Um, Let's come out here sort of east of town a little bit um, and uh, look at things. Yeah, pretty good. So I'm actually pretty happy with uh, with how this has turned out as a whole, uh, just with yeah, using some uh, photos scanned uh, that we pulled off of the web and uh, a couple of ground control points that we picked from road intersections. We were able to actually create a, a useful product with this uh, 90 year old uh, aerial photography. So I hope you found this useful. Um, I think this really opens up some neat things that we could do with uh, historic imagery and looking at, at uh, change detection over a century basically at this point. So uh, thanks and we'll see you next time.